Hey guys, it's Sandy W, and today we are going to be doing something a bit different. We're going to be going over program counter design. And this is actually the uh, program counter design that we're going to be using in our building a redstone computer series. So, yeah, there's something to look forward to. Uh, but, yeah. Anyways, this thing is actually a bit specific to the thing that we're going to be building in that series, in that not only can we uh, use send the value that's going to go into memory here uh, from the program counter. We can also take a value that's just been sent in and comes from the same thing that uh, the program counter can branch to. So basically, if I was to uh, save a 5 into here, into the program counter itself, and then I was to increment it so that it's at 6, I can decide if I want the 5 that's coming from the registers to be the address that's going to memory, if I wanted to uh, use a pointer, or if I wanted to actually use the program counter, I could just uh, use the 6 that's in the program counter. So yeah, and the advantage of that is that it's going to make it so that even though we only have two reads in the memory, it's going to make it so that uh, we can sort of effectively do three because we're using one set of wires to read out both the uh, instruction that's in the uh, what's it called, program counter, and we can also, with that same uh, decoder and uh, address, um, get a pointer from the ALU. So yeah, pretty nifty. So let's go ahead and uh, give a bit of a demonstration now. We've sort of already done this, but uh, first of all, we can branch to line zero, and then this little wire right here will just let us increment. And if you look in the bottom left there, uh, you're going to see that uh, if I can place that properly, three, four, five, six, etc., etc., etc. Now let's say that now that I'm at six, I wanted to branch to line three. I can just flip this lever, and boom, we're at three. Perfect. So that's just about everything for here. So uh, yeah. Let's talk about uh, the way that this thing works because it actually uses a really cool strategy to make it so that you don't really... It basically makes this design really, really small and it's also a pretty uh, nifty thing that uh, implements the fact that the, the value is going to be saved back into a register and we're not just taking one value in and incrementing it. So yeah, let's talk about that now. So in order to understand the concept behind which this incrementer slash program counter is built, we actually have our own incrementer right here, which we're going to be using to sort of prove the exact concept this, this is based off of. So yeah. So first of all, we're using a fairly simple incrementer right here, where we're basically just sending our value through, and we're using an XOR, or rather XNOR with one inverted input, but whatever, we're using one of those where we just um, that we use one of our inputs to decide whether or not we're using the inverse or the identity of whatever value we're using, and we use the other one to determine. Uh, and the other one basically is the thing that is the identity or the inverse that the other bit is deciding from. So if I was to uh, send a five in here, and then I was to uh, flip this lever then it would uh, now be selecting the inverse of this bit as well as the inverse of this bit, so we would get a 6 coming out. So yeah, it works just fine as an XOR, and uh, yeah, it's a sort of a creative way to do it. However, the idea of our inputs being separated like this actually makes it so that it's really easy to prove uh, how exactly this thing is going to work. So, assuming that the value is saved somewhere, we don't have to actually change the value in it if we're just sending the value straight through. So that means that in the option of these two options where we're just sending it straight through, we shouldn't, we just shouldn't even actually bother with saving it. So, for the other instances, we just select the inverse. So we can just take the inverse and say that if we're going to save something, it's going to be the inverse of um, x. So then the only question remaining is where exactly do we save this value? And we can just uh, figure out that we can uh, get from the carry line up here. So yeah, so that's basically the significance of this and why it works. And it's a really simple concept and really, really powerful and really easy to make a really really, uh, what's it called, 
just a really good uh, incrementer based off of. So let's come like up 50 to go ahead and build this. So first of all, we're going to need the place that we're going to actually save this right here. So we're just going to do that by just taking repeater and going along it like this. If you've never seen a register that works like this, basically, you can save a value by just powering it. However, if we just uh, send a repeater into here, then if this is not powered, then uh, we can just flip that and then it will be powered and it won't be powered. So yeah, and then if we just remove this block, whatever state it's in is going to stay. So yeah, that's basically the idea behind this thing. So uh, yeah, that's basically how that works. And the way that we're going to make sure that uh, this, block, we, this block is where we want it, with a piston. So we're just going to make a piston like this. So now what we need to do is we need to just take the value that's in here and we need to send it in here for the inverse. So the way we do that is just by taking a torch up like that. So now we need get to move on to the sort of complicated part and that's just building a carry line. So in order to build a carry line, what we're basically going to do is we're going to have a piston here and we're going to uh, actually put it here. Uh, you can actually put it here. However, that makes it so that you will use it in the opposite state uh, if you were to put it here. So like I would need to invert this to get the same effect. And the reason that we're putting it here is because we're actually going to be taking the power that we are going to use to power this piston from a redstone torch. Because a torch is a convenient way for us to move it a signal from one block to it, of these to another. Uh, as you can see, we're just uh, going to put some redstone here, and then we can just uh, power this just fine. And uh, the reason that this redstone torch is convenient is that we're going to have our next one right here, so there's going to be no corruption there, and we can make it reasonably small. So yeah. So now on to actually branching with that. That's this that is really simple. We just need to make something else to be able to save it to here. So let's go ahead and do that. And ta-da! Now we have one stackable segment of this thing, so let's go ahead and stack it. And before I forget, I should probably do that too. And stack 7. Awesome! So now we can just go ahead and put levers on here too. Expand one, stack 7. No, not Y, 7. So now we can go right ahead and we can add this lever here. And when you're actually building this, you need to make a two tick monostable so that the pistons don't drop their blocks and so that uh, you only update it once. So if we just flip this, you can see it increments. And if we want to branch back to zero, it goes back to zero. Boom, perfect. So yeah, with that, that's just about everything that I wanted to go over in this video. We are going to be using this very soon to actually make a program counter in our Building a Minecraft computer series. So yeah, with that out of the way, I hope you guys have enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time.